put some on net, get some rebounds like we've seen from the, some of these upper echelon teams that have already been casted here today. Underway we go here, game one in our uh, lower bracket series here. And already a quick shot coming out on the way of the upper clots, but a response quickly by B-Ball Heads as Retro with an open goal takes advantage. Yeah, Retro, a nice first touch, beating that defender, cutting it back to the inside with that little hop. And Retro, realizing both players kind of stuck down in that corner, rotating right off the faceoff, gets it done early here. So striking early seems to be fitting the trend so far of the games that we've had on the broadcast thus far, but plenty of time for an adjustment. This feeler game, you don't have quite as much leeway as you would in a best of five series. You don't want to go down one and be facing elimination, which is what these teams are doing right now. It comes Brewster trying to go up the middle with it, give people heads a second goal here. Doing some dancing in the air, swings it over to the opposite end to try and space out this defense. Finds Madge in the air, shot towards the goal. Kids is there for the save, but Retro, shot number two, two for two on the day. We see the same kind of setup coming through, uh, a kind of a mirror of last game, taking that arrow control. Madge just throwing that one out in front and a quick follow-up. Both players immediately in position to take advantage of any touch that comes out of that last defender and up too early. And nearly a chance for number three. Here comes a second chance from the air. Number three off the post and Retro this time will be denied by the fourth and fifth teammate in the post. And finally, a little bit of breathing room for the upper clots who haven't had much yet. Snail opening on the left side, but so slow. Snail-like, some would call it. And sends it to the opposite end of the corner now. Madge, a one-on-one -on -one challenge will find success. Three and O oh in game number one. It started with a great defensive clear there from Brewster. Hammering that one all the way to corner, getting that second touch out in front and a quick transitional play there. Paying dividends here with a 3-0 lead here for B-Ball. Well, the upper clots probably trying to play a little bit of a slower pace. They have a, a teammate named Snail, a teammate named Sloth. So I think it's probably on brand, but of course B-Ball heads sticking it to him a lot of shots here in the opening 90 seconds and a couple there in that last 15 seconds sequence but thankfully defended for the side of upper clots retro doing a good job challenging the corners there's Maj as well brewster just gonna wait on this one get a nice touch towards center keeping this ball into the air where they have found that uh that the other squad cannot contest Ooh. really as Kloss has have not gotten very high for a lot of these challenges, taking advantage of these sidewalls to make sure the ball gets up towards that backboard on the other end. And B-Ball looking to rush it down. Retro, big fake in front. And Retro beats three for that goal. And as well as the hat trick. Yeah, Retro has come out swinging here. Look at this. Another opportunity. Gets the fake. Cuts it back inside just like he did with that first goal. And... That's number four up on the board, and we are just two minutes in. They've already gotten four goals. My math is correct. That's a goal every 30 seconds, which is a pretty impressive feat to start off. 245 on the clock, and B-Ball heads have been holding the momentum this entire time. That's not to say we haven't seen offense, no, from the upper clocks. A couple of opportunities. Now trapped in the midfield is the ball at the half-court line. A chance for upper clocks to create some space here attacking, but so slow and two-dimensional on all of their pushes. Very easy to read, but Madge and Danger hits it off the back wall over to Brewster. And pops it right up to his teammate for an open goal. A beautiful assist leads to a beautiful goal, number five. Yeah, Klaus, maybe a little desperation here, sending three on the challenges. Brewster doing a good job hitting that up and over, setting up Madge for that shot. But again, B-Ball just keeping their foot on the gas pedal, making sure that they're just kind of beating these individual players throughout the midfield. And we'll see if they can try and get another one here as Brewster had the read on Sloth. Retro forcing this one back to his own net. KHZ can't get a touch as Mash to force it towards mid. Retro up for this one, looking for another one. Huge block by Steel as KHZ not able to get it out. Madge sends it back in, but Sloth 
on the defense here on the backboard. Can't get to it. Brewster, big deflection. Oh, my in front. God. And 6 nothing for B-Ball. This is beautiful. A little bit of defense coming out of their side on the orange, but gets right over Sloth and Brewster. Sends it over with the cheeky tap right in. That's such a tight angle, but they are up 6-0 right now. Minute 45 to go. Honestly, at this point, the clock doesn't matter as much. They are feeling so strong at the moment. Madge challenges on the side wall. Sends it towards the goal. Doesn't get anything out of it, but now they have map control. Snail, a clearance for the time being, but Retro is there in the air where they cannot challenge, and Retro will meet him on the ground for goal number seven. Yes, Lost trying that quick clear up through the corner. Retro, a perfect read off the backboard, down in front. Nothing KHZ can do, as that is a great placement shot towards the front of the net. And B-Ball looking extremely poised here in game one, extremely confident with their shots that they've been able to be able to put on. And Sloth trying to break this one out. Retro dunks it down in front. Back to Retro, that passing play from Barusta, almost finding some purchase as Madge. Up and over through midfield. KHZ, a good challenge using that sidewall to get up for that ball. Sloth Cloth. Nice touchdown overneath as Retro. Can't get it. Maj back to corner. Maj, maybe a little confusion on the defensive rotation as all three players were clustered around that. Brewsta through mid. Retro down to corner. Snail get demoed for his trouble trying to go and challenge that. KHZ. It's going to play the shadow defense. Gets a good touch. Looking for the center in retro. Again, some great defensive efforts. Keeping them to that far side. Keeping them in the corner. B-ball looking to quick transition the other way. But some solid offense generated there from Kloss. 30 seconds remaining here in game one. All but set shut. Now looking for some consolation points. Seen a lot more of an even keel game here in the last 90 seconds of the contest. 20 seconds left to go. Snail trying to push some offense in. Defense is there for Retro and Madge. Out of danger for the time being. Brewster meeting the ball at half field, but Madge tries to settle it down. Five seconds to go. A last ditch attempt might come through. And Retro, with so much time and space to work with, gets it out of dodge. Just waiting for the ball to hit the ground as Snail meets it in the air. Keep it alive, and Brewster does as well. They might want another goal, number eight. And they're kept it, keeping it up off the back wall. And finally, with four players there, it will still hit the ground and settle in our game number one scoreline. A dominant, dominant win dismantling Team Upper Clots here in the lower bracket and facing them up against elimination. And Retro doing a great job for his team, getting the MVP honors, four goals on eight shots. And he was able to control the ball especially well alongside that wall, setting up some of these plays where they got the passes through mid, able to sustain that offensive pressure. And Brewster, a good job on the defensive front, getting a lot of the clears up to Mash and letting Retro kind of play his game as we're going to have to wait around here just for a little bit. A player did unfortunately disconnect. So we will uh, we'll get back to the gameplay for you guys in just a minute. But... Shakir, what do you think Klaus can do to try and bring this one back a little bit? It's really tough, right? So that's really what I think separates your mid-level teams to your upper-level teams, and it's your gameplay in the air. And that's something that's been standard for a couple of years now. But if you can't play successfully in the air, you can't play really at a competitive level. So if Klaus want to challenge, they got to do it three-dimensionally. You can't play checkers anymore. You got to go up to the next level. And B-Ball have done a good job of... Uh, keying in on that weakness for the class and trying to take advantage of all of that space that's been afforded to them. Yeah, I think Kiz trying to do that a little bit. He was utilizing that sidewall extremely well to challenge some of those plays coming across that midfield line. Just hope to see Cloth try and emulate a little more of that here in game two. As, like you said, they need to kind of get on the scoreboard with that transitional gameplay. Snail and Sloth maybe not going to be able to take this one slow. Need to ratchet that gameplay up a little bit. And, and kind of just take it to the next level. Yeah, so now it looks like all of our players are back in, so we can head underway here very, very shortly into game number two. Facing elimination are the cloths here. You lose this one, you're out of the tournament, out of the pool. No harm in trying, though, as B-Ball 
They'll have to make this lower bracket one run, but they started here very, very strong. Into game number two we go. Five seconds through. Tip already on towards the right side in the wall. Retro looking for an open score. Backflip was secured in 10 seconds. Retro has come in with a flashy goal. Retro baiting this touch out. Look at that. Tried to take it along the wall. Fakes it instead and goes for his own pass. Retro with a stylish first goal here in the te first 10 seconds. Like taking candy from a baby. Retro repeating a phenomenal performance in game one. And as I said, great first step to making a lower bracket run here. And Brewster trying to turn this one back to mid. His with the clear in off the side while Retro with a good touch tries to follow it through. He'll trap it down and make his way across midfield using that, that width of the field extremely well. Setting up Brewster for this goal. And that play all retro as he kind of goes coast to coast for this pass. And not only can he take the shots, he can set up his teammate, knows that the demo is imminent and slots it up. Probably would have been a goal too, but it's an easy secure to get through. So goal number two, 420 on the clock. And already we have picked up exactly where we left off. Brewster was looking for the tight angle on that goal. Doesn't quite find it, but they have the attack now. Madge in the air towards the left side trying to take the challenge 1v2 falls to the crossbar but gets the shot on target into the corner where they can reset a couple of boosts here won't opt for it though on lots call snail will get a demo on retro as the ball is in the midfield retro and madge waiting though so resetting this offense taking some time to play slowly and regain this map control at the same time the clots have been denied an opportunity to counterattack. here comes a Float opportunity for Retro to lay it in, but Kiz from D, and now a counterattack finally can be started. Trying to pop it over, no success. Snell has to front, has to run back, meets the ball, gets the save. 3.30 left to play. Yeah, and you saw Brewster just kind of chilling out on the backboard, maybe a little cheeky play coming out, but the defense from B-Ball, respecting the clear, knowing that it's coming, the first touch has not been too terribly close to either of their teammates as Kiz tries to push it across mid that they've been able to sit back on defense beyond that midfield line waiting for them to clear back in and start their counter attack so kind of a clear play style choice from the side of b-ball to just kind of counteract these defensive clears from the other side with claw says this one set deep mash it's a triple tap off the sidewall sends it up the retro Snail Claws, a good challenge towards midfield. A shot may come out. Look out as Sloth takes one, bangs it to the backboard. Nobody there. And Brewster tries to start the rotation the other way. Snail tries to put that one back on net. Brewster tries to tap it out as Maj. He's going to try to put, set this play up for Retro. Sends it deep off the sidewall. Back down in front. Maj can't get to it as he was bullied off that ball by Kiz. Still there. And Kiz. Finally able to get that clear out, but his one last attempt, zero boost and a dream, tries to put him in, Snail Cloth right there, still out in front, no one able to touch oh it, and Kiz knocks this one up for Sloth and Maj, able to push it to the corner, so it's a great offensive effort there from Kloss, but still the score remains 2-0 here for the side of B-Ball. It's 2-0, it's been dominant, but it's only 2-0, so a goal there would have cut the lead in half and given some time for a reset to keep them alive. They're facing elimination and open goal again. Retro diving in for a save and now a counter attack can be pushed. Get out of dodge. They've had enough of that. A shot on target. Cloth is there for the save and Kiz meets the challenge in the midfield but can't regain possession. Madge with a big miss and Cloth, or Snail I should say, sends it long into the corner so Kiz can finally reset with some more offense here. Goal is wide open. No one's there to capitalize. Slot. A reaching touch, but Madge with the save, and Brewster resets it, finds it in the air in the midfield. Still in danger, though, as Kiz finds the challenge up against Madge in the ball. Still not having any impact on the scoreline for Upper Kloss, although this attack has come out. It might be too little too late. 60 seconds left to go. Demos on the side of B-Ball to create some space, but it hasn't stopped it yet. They have been unrelenting, but unable to find the net. Retro finally towards the side might have just enough connects with Brewster it's in danger he does get the shot on target but it's a big save to come in still close match can't get the connection and kids who's been pushing the counter attack all day with it takes it to the side wall here comes Sloth 
Nadge meets him that's in the middle good, in the air. That's a good passing play is coming out on the side of Claws. Good adjustment to make sure that they're not able to maintain as much possession as they had in game one is what kept this score uh, a lot closer than it had been. Three nothing still with 30 seconds left, but Claws trying to try to generate offense through some of those passing plays and you have seen it across that midfield line definitely working out for him and that one quality chance they got uh we're not able to put away but again still keeping this game a lot more even than, than the first frame yeah, unfortunately despite two minutes of unrelenting offense unable to find the back of the net and that goal by madge very well have made have been the dagger as they go up from two goals to three 10 seconds to go you cannot really come back from here and they played really well here in game number two to stay alive a very different scoreline from the 7-0 we saw in game one so they'll exit the tournament here as we wait for the ball to hit the ground with a good showing and not going down without a fight but it will be b-ball with the opportunity to keep fighting as they move forward further along in this lower bracket, taking this best of three series in a sweep. And again, on the broadcast here for you and I, Gil, another sweep for us. Yeah, B-Ball definitely taking advantage of the uh, lack of aerials from Cloth, definitely punishing them out. And Retro, the uh, pretty much de facto team captain there, just rushing downfield for a lot of these plays, setting it up, being aggressive, and just sticking with the ball is what B-Ball kind of opted 